Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Grand Brothers Turbo. As always, Todd Stark. Hello, a lot of energy today. And we would have John Taylor, but he is uh, he's absent at the moment. He I, may show up. He could, and if he does not, that is in school suspension. Yeah, I mean, how That's many five how parties. many weeks now have we not had John? I mean, I, mean, I, I thought, haven't missed the little bastard, mm-hmm. but he's got to be here. You know what it is? Is because no one's asking him questions. He doesn't want to be here. He's hurt. All of you audience members out there not asking John questions, this is this is why he's not been here. He's he's upset. We, I mean, he wouldn't admit to it on air, but we know what it is. Let's not get into it. <laughs> junk. I, don't, I don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about video games. Uh, uh, Todd, uh, what have you been playing this week? I have played... Well, it was Halloween. Mm-hmm. So, played uh, Dead by Daylight. Still want to play that? Yes, I got murdered by... Michael Myers, like I played the you know the first week, and I was like, man, I'm badass at this game. Like the first week, mm-hmm. and uh, then I get on there this time, and I guess the killer that you know we faced this time knew what he was doing. Yeah, he would hang you up and hide, and like he gutted me a few times. While I was on the hook, and he'd just wait for you, mm-hmm. like somebody'd come up there and rescue him. You know, he'd come up behind you, kill you. And Michael Myers is fast and quiet, like you just don't hear him. So is that is that one of the things? Because again, I have never played it. So can you, uh, other killers? Can you hear them coming? Uh, one of them hums. And it's really cool. It gets louder. She's a hunter. So that's probably my favorite one. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one that like most time your heart beats real fast the closer they get mm-hmm. and louder. And Michael Myers, I believe the music plays a little bit, but like he's oh he gets up on you so quick. Oh, okay. It, it, that the music really doesn't help you a whole lot, but your heart does beat. But there's perks, though, where you can look in a direction and it tells you he's over there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, he, he knew what he was doing. It was crazy. I have to play some time. I want to play this game. Yeah, it's fun. And then I played Seven Days uh, Seven Days to Die. Mm-hmm. A lot of just dying. A lot of death. And just, but lot, it's yeah. perfect for Halloween. That's good. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, I played, I kind of bounced around, uh, I kept going back to Injustice 2 because I didn't feel like I had a lot of time to play, so it was just something I could easily pick up, do a few fights and go, you know, just something kind of to pass the time, because I've been on a funk with games. Yeah. Uh, but, but during, there were a few times that I tried a few different things, um, I tried a PC game, and I think I may have mentioned this last week, Party Hard, Yeah. but I played it a little bit more in depth, um. It's kind of a, it's a very interesting game. You know, it definitely requires some skill and you have to, to think about how you go about certain situations because it takes a while. I right. mean, there, there might be a way to do the the slaughtering and the killing of people at these parties faster, but I don't know what it would take. Granted, there are opportunities to kill multiple at a time, Right. but again, you have to be aware of your surroundings and what you can use at your disposal. I will admit there was one thing that threw me completely off guard. Did not see this coming, but I guess it fits in this game. And I would probably say this is probably a game you probably cannot stream. I don't know this for sure, but after seeing this, I could probably say, yeah. Um, I happened to be at one of the parties and I was looking around and I was like, all right, I got to get this person and this person out. From time to time, you'll see couples like drift off by themselves. Right. And the few times I've seen them, they're, they're off, you know, hearts fluttering over their heads and then you'll see them make out. So I'll just go behind to them and just stab them. Right. I'm like, aha, it's easy kill. Well, apparently I didn't pay attention to two of them and I'm pretty sure I saw one, uh, performing fellatio on another. Like licking their toes. Yeah, exactly. Licking their toes. It was just, it was (laughs) amazing. I was like, Oh, what? Uh, uh, okay. Wow. All right. Wait, did you like it? Uh, well, it's no. I mean, it's it's eight bit. It was kind of weird, but you just no, you kind of got back in the day. Eight bit was still awesome. Yeah, but like, this this was just kind of strange doing. because you just you you know what's going on. You can pretty much tell, but it's still kind of blocky and weird. And you're just like, Am I'm I saying seeing what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> eight out of ten times, it's hot. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just saying it. But well, 
Maybe for you. It wasn't for me. But that's Blocks fine. or not. I'm just saying. It's fine. It's fine. I'd like to see some, you know. Some blocky fellatio? Chick on chick Minecraft action. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that would be something. I mean, if somebody does that, we'll have to look that up. We'll have to find that out. They've probably done it. Something with a goat. I don't know. I'm sure someone has. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we just move into the news before we get make this to be a very uh, R-rated podcast. Um, first big news this week was the uh, Paris conference from yes. Sony. Very big week. Um, they pretty much said that it was like the second part of their E3 presentation. Yeah. Which I guess they kind of expanded in a lot. There were a few surprise announcements of, of things that they were talking about. Uh, there were a number of games that were announced uh, and previously announced titles. We'll kind of go through a list, just kind of uh, hit some bullet points. Uh, first first thing was The Last of Us Part Two. They showed a new trailer for yeah. that. They didn't really give any details. But, no, it doesn't. Uh, this, the world, I guess you could say, is still a mess. I, here's what I want to know. Okay, they stringed the woman up, right? Mm-hmm. Did she not seem like she was fixing to cut her stomach like she had a baby in her? Did you see well, that? Well, yeah. Her field was sin. There, there was that... There, For me, there was that sense that there's something more going on here right uh i wasn't quite sure what right and yeah i did have that since it like there was maybe she's pregnant that got me wondering is this a person that's immune like ellie and is this her? ellie's mom yeah very much so yeah I so that's what i want to know do we know much about her do we know her name or anything like that ellie's mom mm-hmm. i i can't remember no because they never really talked about her right did i ever i mean Obviously, she was mentioned, and but it was... And she, she, she made reference to that little girl. She said, clip her wings. Mm-hmm. Fireflies. Right. right. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just wondering. Now, did you hear the controversy about that, by the way? No. Um, what was it? Where people were like... Harvey the, Weinstein the violence, had something to do with it? No. The oh. violence within the trailer... Uh, was you, awesome. Had to be done. No. They were just like, well, this is too much. They're, they're, no. they're missing the point. And I'm like, well, what, what point are we talking about here? They are not missing the point. That drove that home for me. Okay. Her breaking that arm with a freaking mm. hammer? Come on, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was vicious. It was It real. was. They could have cut the arm off, mm-hmm. but that was... All, all it really was was a hammer to the, what, forearm? Yeah. Elbow area? Mm-hmm. They could have cut the arm off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, to me, it just shows what kind of world you're living in. It ain't like you didn't see it in the first one. Yeah. And th- that's where it starts to blur a line for me where people are picking and choosing. Yeah. What, I mean, what's too graphic anymore? You know, I, we'll probably actually talk about that a little later because I, I know I've got a, a bit to talk about that. That's but, what we got rating systems for, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if if you don't like it, you don't have to play it. Right. You know, if you if it's not your cup of tea, go find something else. Go play Mario. Well, parents, watch what your kids are playing. Exactly. Now, I can't stand when I go in like a GameStop or something and there's like little kids in there with their mama. Mm-hmm. And, you know, good and well, they don't know what they're buying. No. They just know their kid that Johnny wants, you know, Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. They don't need that. They're they're seven. And you know, at this point in the in the life cycle of of video games where they are, the fact that the rating system's been out as long as it has, I honestly, and I'm not saying that it's it's up to the um, the cashiers or the the employees no, of the stores not. or anything like that. But I think they they should at least kind of express their concern. Should they see it? Right. Just say, hey, just want to let you know this is rated. You know, well, they gotta have their parents' ID to buy it, so yes, that should exactly. tell the parent something. Exactly. Immediately, so it's not on the store; it is on that parent. Right. No. 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 And I'm not trying to push the yeah, blame on the right. stores by any means. I just I feel like I wish they, you know, some of them at least that way they can have a clear conscience and say, I did what I could. I let the parent know that this is inappropriate for that child mm-hmm. because of this, right. this, and this. Just turn it over and say, you see that? That's that's an M. This is all the stuff that's in it because it, they do just like. You know, movies, they tell you all the stuff that's in it. Right. There's so a lot if, of cracking in this game. There's somebody got yeah. their head cut off. I seen a pecker. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm not buying them. <laughs> Graphic violence, language, sexual situations, all Peckers. that stuff. You point that to the to the parent and you say, you see that? Just letting you know that that's what's in right. the game. You're going to allow your, your six or seven year old to play it. I'm just I'm just letting you know. Clear your conscience. But uh, yeah, no. I, I didn't really understand the the frustration, the argument of like, oh, it's too violent, it's too graphic. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you you did see the last game, right? I mean, it was yeah. kind of brutal too. So whatever, I don't care. I uh, loved it. I I'm st- it yeah, awesome. I'm still looking forward to it. Nothing's changed. It, yeah. And like, what surprised me was Joel and Ellie was nowhere to be found, and I still want to play that game. I would play as that woman. Yeah, 
She had, she was badass. I'm I, th- I think that raised a lot more questions for yeah. me because now I'm wondering, okay, now what are we doing? Because right. you, again, you didn't see them. You saw no traces of anything other than the fireflies, but they didn't even say that. Right. And then you got that those clickers coming in at the end. So I know they called them make, demons. Yeah, that's true. So, so uh, that, again, just makes you wonder, okay, what are we doing? Right. But now, you've, you've got my attention. What if this was just showing the group that, kills joel you know yeah this is who she's talking about i'm gonna hunt them down i'm gonna kill every one of them mm-hmm. so Could she, be. i don't know it's it's interesting i cannot wait yeah uh next game was spider-man uh Woo! they showed uh, a few new things uh some new footage they actually showed that you could you're going to be playing as mj at some point in the game i don't which like that i think why not i just don't but i, I think it would add a, a different element it's not i think that also Spider-Man kind of and mary jane yeah, but we don't know what we don't know what Mary Jane's going to add to it. She'll have her own unique position in the game, I'm sure. Which does kind of make me wonder: Are you going to be able to play as Peter Parker as well? Because yeah, you do. That first, did, did they actually show you as? Because we've seen him as Peter Parker in the game, but do you get to play? Oh, I as see. Peter as Parker. Peter Parker. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I misunderstood you. Because that opens up an entirely new dynamic as well. I think so. I mean, it shows Miles Morales in, and and you know that's funny. They're they're dodging that. They've they've yet to say that you're going to get to play him. They have not shown you play him. Which, all right, I'm going to go into some slightly spoiler territory. I'm throwing out a theory. I want to hear. I wonder if it's the same as mine because I'm curious if we're not seeing Miles being played, but we're all kind of on this. We're going to have to play him, right? Right. It's going to happen, right? Like, we're just excited. And they continue to say that this is a seasoned Spider-Man. He's been around. He's done his thing. You know, he's been Spider-Man for for some time. What if the story leads to Peter Parker's death? Could. Very much in the sense of ultimate Spider-Man. In that universe, Spider-Man did die. And then Miles Morales took over. I'm curious if they'll tell a story yeah. similar to that, that would be where awesome. something would happen where he dies and then Miles has to pick up the mantle to finish the game. He would essentially be like right there at the end. And then maybe you could play him from that point on. I, again, speculation theories. I don't know anything for sure. I think that would be awesome. They could still do that mm-hmm. with my theory. I mean, it wouldn't really change anything. Okay. But, you know, you play as Peter Parker at first. And then very shortly, I don't see maybe chapter one, you know, you get Peter Parker and then you're going to swap over. You're going to play as Miles Morales and Peter is going to start showing you the ropes. He wants you to take over. Maybe that's the whole thing with Mary Jane. He really wants to be with Mary Jane. He's going to make that choice. But as long as he knows that there's a Spider-Man, he might be okay with with leaving. He's going to show you how to do everything. And that could work too. Yeah. But then he could also roll right into what you said. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are numerous ways they could tell that. I do like that they're using um, different characters. Now, this different characters in the sense of, I'm glad that Miles is getting in the game. Um, the main villain is a character. He's a lesser-known villain that's never been in the movies. He's I, I barely knew him until recently, uh, called Mr. Negative. Right. Um, well, I, you've I, seen Kingpin, too. Yeah, he, Kingpin's in there as well, but he doesn't seem to be as prominent. He was in jail, but I'm sure he'll have a, a bigger role for sure. Right. And I don't know to what capacity he's ever been in video games, but still, it's cool to see Kingpin. One yeah. headline that I read that just it made me so mad after this trailer was it was the clickbaitiest crap I'd ever seen. <laughs> it was just like Spider-Man villain that you may have missed in the trailer. Blink and you miss it. And I'm like, what villain are they talking about? And they were talking about Shocker. Now I don't know if you saw Shocker in the trailer or not. It wasn't a blink and you miss it thing. I spotted him like, oh cool, Shocker. And I just I I rolled it off like, ah. What did he have an outfit on? Yeah, he had his yeah. entire costume. I thought I, on. yeah. But they they made it sound like you had to just freeze frame it and be like, oh look, there's Shocker. He had three lines. No, he was there <laughs> and he shot Spider Man through a wall. <laughs> it was just like, uh, no, I I don't like those damn clickbaity nonsensical no, garbage. I, don't uh, anyway. I hate it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, next game was Guacamelee Two. Excited loved for that. The original. Oh, before you go on, I loved how they did with the uh, with the whole thing. You know, they they let the indie games like Guacamelee and those have their 
hour. They had a whole hour dedicated to them, mm-hmm. just like they did at um, E3. I really like that little that whole thing they go there. You know, it's right. you don't waste that time. Not that it's a waste of time, but everybody got their day. You know, I guess day in the sun uh, with yeah. the way they do it. Yeah, and then, yep, that was the first thing they announced. It was as soon as they started that little thing. Boom, Guacamelee Two. Here's a a trailer. Here's the people, and they had, they spent their time with them. So to me, that is way better than being on the stage. I mean, yeah, maybe more people see you on the stage, but man, like the real diehard fans are already watching. I watched it. I was, I was hurt. Yeah, but I, it was there, you know. But I, I just I like how they do that. I wanted to mention that. No, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I think it's good that indies are, are starting to get their their due. And Drinkbox yeah. Games, they haven't. I mean, they've done a handful of different things. This is one of their best awesome. games that they've ever done. And I, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what threw me for a loop because when I saw it, I was like, two? Oh, because I'd never heard any rumblings about it. And right. then just, boom, there it is. Yeah. And I loved playing that game. It was a yeah, fantastic. It's, it's Even so co-op fun. was really yeah. good. Yeah, every bit of that game was awesome mm-hmm. altogether. There was, I, couldn't, I can't say anything wrong. Even the backtracking was not bad. There, there was some difficulty to it, but... In a good way. The, it, the final battle was crazy, yes. but that was old school crazy yeah. hard, you know? Like, there was a way to do it, but you had to figure it out. It, it really, and I, I would almost say that it almost goes to that Cuphead level, but I don't even, I feel like Cuphead was maybe like a tinge higher. Yeah, but, I would say so. That's not to say that this was difficult to the point where you just couldn't do it. It was. It took you some, some time, some skill. You just, you had to think it through for a moment. It's like, what am I doing wrong? All right, I can go in, just take a little strategy, and I'll do it. And you do. I mean, I eventually beat it. I'm sure you, yeah. you eventually beat it too. It just you've got to to work out your strategy. Oh my god, yeah. It's almost like at some point you like you know how far down you had to get to at a certain point and have a certain amount of energy to actually be able to finish. Because if you got to the end, you was just you wasn't making it. No, you know? no, absolutely. You had to have energy. And uh, I guess in that third transformation, that whatever what was his name? Um, I can't remember. I can't either. But yeah, I know the what skeleton you're guy. About. Yeah, <laughs> that third transformation he did it just. I I got lucky, I think, mm-hmm. and beat it. Anybody who has not played Guacamelee that's listening right now, please, please go out there and find Guacamelee and play it. I I promise you, you it's will on your not PlayStation Store. Yeah, just yeah. look it up. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, you won't. Um, the next game was a Hong Kong Massacre. I don't know if you looked at that too much. I seen a little bit of it. It, it, it at first, you know, they had a very flashy trailer when they actually a, showed. Is this a VR game? I don't think it was a VR game. Okay, because they ran through a bunch of those, and mm-hmm. I didn't know if this was at the beginning of it. Yeah, I did. I put a few in there, but uh, not not too many. But this one, it for me, it was like a flashier, sleeker Hotline Miami, the way it played, because it was top down. Yeah, you're shooting people, you're running through things, jumping through things. That was what it invoked in me. I was like, okay, so you just took that concept, but you made everything sleek and you know, more modern instead of the 8-bit look right. of the old days, which, I mean, it may work. I mean, the, the, if the concept is still good. I, so I, did, I don't think I've seen it. I just remember, I remember the uh, the name, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it looks like it could be all right. Uh, the next one was uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima. This is the new game from Sucker Punch, the developer behind the Infamous series. Super excited about this game, dude. I think their name alone kind of invokes that. Because I wasn't sure until I saw their name, and I was like, all yeah. right, well, I think I'll give it a shot. And not to say that the the setting itself, because they really didn't show too much. But no. I think their name has a, enough credibility behind it to where you're like, all right, well, let's see what you got. You know, it's kind of like Naughty Dog. You know, if you saw a brand new IP, you had no nothing or no idea what it was, but then you saw their label on it, it piques your interest. You're like, okay, you've got my attention. Please go on. Right. And wh- the best thing for me is like it's feudal Japan. Yes. Not many games are set in feudal Japan. Except for games like Kid Nicky, where they call people radical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. mystical ninja. They haven't where, really done it right. Where they I, have I guess probably there are more than no, I think it, of, like Dynasty Warriors and stuff like that. I'm pretty but sure. But even that's, that seems a stretch because Dynasty Warriors is kind of an anime style slash right. feudal Japan. So, no, I understand what you mean, where it's more. This seems like it's taken it more seriously than other games in the past have. So I think I understand what you mean. Uh, the next one was Far Cry 5. They uh, showcased their co-op system in that. Um, I, I've always wanted to do co-op. And like part three, they they had co-op. Part four, I think, was a little bit more in 
in depth. It was the only the only reason I don't have a platinum on part four is because of co-op. Hey, I got the hot spot. Yeah, platinum. you do. We Wait, can, which one? Right. It's part four. Part four. It's, we're gonna have to platinum that dude. If you you better have part four because that makes me so mad. And see, primal they didn't have co-op in primal, and that was fine. I don't like when they have trophies or achievements or anything like that that you have to do online. That's nonsense. It's ridiculous. Because not everybody has that option. Hey, you remember when I said you'd get that platinum? Uh-huh. I don't, I don't have Far Cry 4 Fine. Anymore. Thank you so much. Sorry. i would probably go get it for uh, really cheap, though. Well, if you want to. If you, if you want to help me get that. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get it, too. Because we can be helping each other. GG. That's right. <laughs> GG. Good job. But I, I'm kind of curious. They said that the uh, co-op in this, it will still progress your story. Right. I kind of feel like it's a lot like uh, Dying like Light. It. Yeah. Because yeah. that did that. Yes. Which I always like. Uh, you could do the whole story together. Yeah. I think, th- could you do the final mission together? Was that the only one that wouldn't let you? I can't remember. In Dying Light? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I know that we played quite a few missions we played, together. Yeah, we played a lot, and then like I remember, I, I know that I did the final mission by myself. That mm. son of a bitch, I don't know if I would want to do that with anybody. No, that was... I got frustrated. That was really, really Yeah, that jumping on those damn beams, dude. I was yes. so mad. And that was the only part of that game that I felt like, mm, your controls don't work here. Yeah. But it was so just spot on platform platforming over yeah. those beams. That was the only thing. I think that's what got us. And there's mm-hmm. probably an easier way to do it. Oh, yeah. It, I did it. It was a lot about timing, making sure you're jumping yeah. to the right. It was, yeah, it was. I remember it. <laughs> but did it not, when, it, when you shut that one door to go into that building, did it not say, you cannot go back past this point? Mm-hmm. And I was one, I can't remember if it's like, and you're not. This is no more co-op from here on, or something. I can't right. remember. I don't know. I can't it remember. It's been a while. But anyway, I'm I'm stoked for Far Cry Five. I love the series. Yeah, um, and it's in America this time, mm-hmm. and you get to see that that part of America, yeah. which they're gonna it's gonna be over the top. But damn it, it is like that in oh, some yeah. places. There's people that think like that, and yeah, you know, we as Americans didn't want to hear that. We like no. to think of the foreigners as. Being the ones who are crazy, not us. No. It's hitting too close to home. Oh, my God. Uh, They're crazy rednecks no, on a no. game. I know seven of them right now, mm-hmm. and they ain't even in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monster Hunter World was shown again. They showed uh, some extra footage from that, some new monsters, and the fact that there's a little DLC where you get to play as Aloy from Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn, which I thought was a really nice addition. See, when I seen her on there, I thought that I was looking at a preview for Frozen Wilds. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think anything else of it. Yeah. But then you told me it was, you know, downloadable content. Mm-hmm. I thought that's that's cool because yeah, she's she's awesome. by far one of my favorite characters this year. It's been a bit a real <laughs> big uh, year for like women characters, like strong mm-hmm. women characters up front. Yeah, absolutely. Like Senua, um, uh, her. <laughs> I lost. Uh, I don't know. Aloy. I could not think of her name. <laughs> Aloy. Sorry, Aloy. Yeah, Aloy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You had a few others there that you could name, but it's a big year for them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next one was uh, Detroit Become Human. They showed a, an intense showcase of a story yes. thread that I didn't feel like that this was much different than some of the stuff they showed. Granted, the story was different, but right. I just mean the showing the choices and then right. you can go back and do this differently and so on. I mean, it's, I think we've th- seen that before in, in yeah. the previous trailer, but still, it's just it was neat to see. What got me in this trailer was I was immediately emotionally drawn into it. Like, I felt for that little girl. I felt for that robot. Like, all of a sudden, you know, she, her conscience developed, you know, and I yeah. guess they have those. She upgraded or something. Yeah. I don't know. But I immediately felt that, and I didn't feel that in the other ones mm-hmm. as much as I focused on the way the situation went. Yeah. But this one emotionally got me. Plus, I was like, oh, that's a cool choice. That's a cool choice. There was a lot of freaking choices there mm-hmm. that you could do. And I do like that because I feel like that having a wide array of choices, it kind of breaks down how a lot of people would think and feel. And I would love right. to watch people play I do too. this with a different sensibility than myself. Yeah, you know, Beth, w- stream this. When when you have somebody, you know, if, if this guy, regardless of any situation that you're in, if I was in a situation where I saw a guy who was going to go, w- what I felt was going to go hit his child yeah. viciously and violently, I'm, I'm going to react. I think I'm going to be like, no, you're not. You're going to just step back. But then they gave those options. Do you attack him? Do you just you know, step aside because there are times in, in life you don't want to step on somebody's toes, right? you know, because you're like, all right, well, it's their kid. You, you want to let them deal with it. But then at the same time, where's that line? I mean, right. are you going to, you know, sit back and watch somebody beat their child? Are you going to assume that everything's going to be okay? What do you do? Right. So I like that they, they've given that 
option of different layers. It's not just yes or no. Right, and that's mm-hmm. what uh, uh, I'm. I'm anxious to see how much of you being a robot plays into this because I'm pretty sure there's some kind of program in your head that says you can't attack a human. Right. So how's oh, yeah. that going to play into mm-hmm. it? Like, there's there's got to be parts where you're just like you, it won't allow you to do anything, and it's going to have to be brutal. It's going to have to be emotional. Yeah. To, to really hit home, I think. But I think it makes me also feel like with those choices, like any one thing that you change in those things could result in something way bigger. That's, yeah, they do. I did feel that. They definitely seem like they've branched out the idea and concepts. Like this is what well, we've had: uh, heavy rain and uh, beyond, beyond two, two souls. souls. This felt they, more heavy rain to me. Yeah. Absolutely. And the the endings that you're going to have, I don't know, each situation seems like they have so much more to, to build off of versus right. this path or that path. Like you're not going to venture down, the, you may venture down the same story. I don't know that. Right. I, I would be surprised if you don't in some way because a lot of these games, it's just what they do. Right. But it, it's hard to see this not i mean you having all these choices but yet you still always go down the same path because that's almost you're playing a game where it's essentially saying everything is predetermined right you know what i mean so why do we, why do we even have the choices kinda unless like you're going to and unless you're actually going to build off of that philosophy that would be right. kind of neat now, i think they they might have it right this time i would hope so i mean, they, I mean they've had three you know they've done it for three other games like indigo prophecy um, mm-hmm. heavy rain and beyond two souls I think I, I just liked how they really changed it up in Beyond Two Souls because mm. Heavy Rain and Indigo Prophecy or whatever it is, they were a lot alike. Yeah. And then now this game is a lot like those. I feel like, and I don't know, man. I'm just I'm I'm pumped for it. After that trailer did that for me. Yeah. It's I'm I'm excited for them. Yeah. They, they they know what they're. Did doing. they have a release date for that? Did you say? Uh, I don't think so yet. Yeah. They no, probably we're still won't. we're still waiting on that. Now the next game does uh, Shadow of the Colossus. They yes. Showed the cinematic for it that was actually the opening cinematic for that game i don't know if you've played that recently or not or you remember not that, recently i haven't but i kind of remember that it. opening or just that what they showed that's essentially when you turn the game on it's loaded and before you get to the start screen that's what that was right so i remembered the music i remember the setting so as soon as i saw the eagle i was like oh i see what they're doing so you got to see the land remade it just looks so dude, gorgeous being in that forest man hmm. god it just blew the other one out of the water dude. yeah They've it's, Blue Point. They're yes. the ones doing it. Uh, uh, they're they're awesome, amazing. What they, they are. Do. They are. Ve- they're very good. Yeah. Uh, but this this actually does have a release date of February sixth, two thousand eighteen, yep. and for thirty nine ninety nine. That's awesome. So I mean, and that's that's worth it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's going to be people out there who are going to argue. Well, why should I have to pay for it again, baby? It's a whole new game. It's it's essentially built from the ground up to look even better than it ever has. I hope they I'm did not the controls complain. different. Yeah. That's the well, one thing. Well, I did hear that the controls are still kind of, they called them janky. Yeah, and that's just one of their games. I think that's just the thing. With Last Guardian was kind of janky. Yeah. But as long as it's more modern, because mm-hmm. I don't like the tank controls. And I felt like that's what the other one was. Uh, sort of. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's a learning curve you have to just right. kind of get used to. I played it so much that I just kind of got used to it. Once you kind of fall into it and you just get used to it, you know what to expect. Right. I'm not saying it's perfect. There are times that you just get frustrated. Last Guardian is the same way, though. Hanging on and, and you got to adjust the angles. It is frustrating. But the game is just so damn good, I kind of overlook it. Yeah, he's holding that sword up. Just the way the beam looked, you know, mm-hmm. holding it towards the Titan yeah. or the, the Colossus. The Colossus. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Titan. But it was just, even that was totally just different. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, we got God of War, more gameplay. Looks good. Oh Still my excited. god, dude! I got so excited at the end of it. Whenever I thought I seen Val Robin, mm-hmm. yeah. I, that's got to be who that is. Uh, speculation. Yeah, it's got to be speculation. I mean, look, just like the one from Hellblade. I think mm-hmm. like he was like, okay, look, I, I got to be done with Hellblade by this time because I got another thing with God of War. Yeah. I got to go over there. But That'd that be cool. But you know, like that song that you kept that chant kind of thing. Mm-hmm. His son was like, "What's that, Daddy?" He was like, "You'll see, boy." Yeah. <laughs> and then it sounded just like. The the song from Hellblade. There was a like a kind of played through the wind, you know, kind of chant kind of song. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just I love it, dude. When I seen him, I was like, oh god, this is gonna be awesome. There's no telling what they can do with that, you know. No, yeah, no. I love the Vikings anyway. Shit is awesome. I can't. Uh, I don't think they gave a release date for that, did they? Early 2018. So, so probably March. I was gonna say they're gonna release uh 
You got Monster Hunter World, and then you're going to have Shadow Monster Hunter Colossus. January, right? Yeah, and then Shadow Claws is about a week okay. after. I'm so I'm going to say like March, mid March to late March. Yeah, they're going to have to give. I'd say a lot of these games some time. Yeah, and they will. They they're real good about that. They like yeah. to spread it out for the whole year where Microsoft packs the end. And mm-hmm. this year, I just we'll talk about them later. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blood and Truth was a uh, virtual expansion of the heist game from yeah. the VR worlds. That looked pretty interesting. It did. I I, I thought that the the London heist was done real well. Mm-hmm. It was like a it was a tech demo, pretty much. Yeah. You know, just to expand on that. And let you have more freedom to actually look like it was like you moved through the whole level. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. guessing so. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm kind of hoping that they'll do. And like you said, it's kind of a tech demo. Is just making sure that a lot of the controls are a lot more fluid. I really wish they'd come up with like gloves or something. You they know need I mean? a nunchuck. They need yeah. something with a because the the little remotes. I mean, they they work to a point, but I just I feel like there's more fluidity if you had gloves or something. You know? Yeah. I don't know what it would take to do that. It might be difficult. I think it would be difficult because there's no buttons to push. Very true. You got to have buttons, and but all, the, yeah, I, I like the whole trigger thing. But I feel like I'm dude from Sons of Anarchy that they cut all his fingers off except yeah. the one where he could write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't beat off no more. Um, well, maybe they'll use the uh, what do you call it? The aim controller. I'd still like to try that. I have, yeah, I've yet to. to I haven't either, try man. It yet. I've I, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I said it really. Well, when you turn it, when it's working. Uh, uh, Super hot. Not really. Well, yeah. Uh, I kind of feel like I remember them saying it's going to have um, support that later on. And it hmm. might do it by now. I can't remember, though. I could see where it could work, and then other times, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Well, they said it's awesome when you're in there and you just you move it, and it's the, the actual gun. You're holding the gun, and it's, nice. that would be cool. Yeah. You know? I want to know how that make tricks my brain. You know, yeah. that's that's the thing that's coolest <laughs> with me. How, God, it looks like it's a real gun, you yeah. know, but it's I'm holding a plastic bent up hula hoop. <laughs> With a trigger. Uh, the last game that I had listed was called Erica. It's a full motion video game uh, that is in VR, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of a sucker for full motion videos and the fact that it's going to be kind of like a 3D movie. That's yeah. pretty awesome. I think this is playing off of Night Trap's popularity that they just had. I really yeah, think that. You know, I kind of, as soon as that got released, I never heard anything about it. It's just like it was like, hey, it got released. But there was a big, huge, you know, uproar for it. You yeah, know? So but it just I'm wondering if that's what this is. I don't know. It died pretty quickly. It did. At least I. I mean, I still want to play it. I think I've everybody went. Oh, I remember. This is really shitty. God. Yeah. They, oh man. God, I. Sh- mm, I shouldn't have drank last night. <laughs> uh, there were a list of other titles, a few indie titles, other VR titles. They, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Well, I guess. before you go off that Erica game, it looked like a live action Heavy Rain. Yeah. Did you notice how the the words were floating? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I only seen a little bit of it, but that's the first time I was like, that, that could be cool. Oh yeah. I'd if love it's to see done that... right, that could be real cool. Yeah. Did it have the play link? Does it? Do I, that? Yes, I do believe there was see, a play link. I think that, that stuff well. like that is awesome and mm-hmm. it's going to work. Yeah, they're really pushing that. Good. I'm, I'm really yeah. uh, glad that they're they didn't just kind of come up with this and be like, hey, we're going to do this thing, and then we just forget about it. Because right. they even said at the the Paris conference, they're still committed to VR. They seem very committed to PlayLink. Yeah. So I'd love to I'd love to see what their plans are in the future for this because they're they're set on it, you know. Well, I know one thing that uh, what knowledge is power. Isn't that mm-hmm. a game that came out? Is that what it's called? Like something? Uh, it, w- it was one of the newer ones that came out. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pretty much a game show. Yeah. And that works. That'd be awesome. Can oh, you imagine yeah. just being hammered, playing out with your friends? That'd be fun. And anybody would want to do that. And you know it, what's funny? And I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a little tangent for a moment for some of the people go, listening go ahead. because you know i've heard a lot of friends of mine say oh we need to play those jackbox games and stuff like that they're really fun with groups and we never do it you know and it, they are they are if you can get a group of people <laughs> together to play like you said that would be fun to play as a group together i play with you dude I, I want i want people to play with i want people to play but those are only fun in the same room well not necessarily do they have because online for them? you can i mean if you stream they have like a room that you just log into, and everybody can play together. I've actually played with a streamer before. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's really neat. So you know, some of you streamers out there got some Jackbox game you want to play. Put on Jackbox game. I'm just saying, but yeah, no. If, I mean, if you don't have a streamer or anything like that, yeah, you want to be in the same room. You mean like a streamer like it hangs off of my bicycle handles? Yes, just like that. They need a, a streamer that hangs off your bicycle handle needs to uh, start playing that game so we can play with it. Just oh, like that. Just Thank like you that. so much. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. I'm going to move on now to okay. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Comes out November 17th. 
It does. Uh, there was the controversy we've been speaking of the last two or three weeks about loot boxes. Uh, since it's made headlines, EA has uh, decided to make changes to the uh, Battlefront progression system. Okay. Uh, in a post on the official website, EA said that they looked at feedback for those who participated in the beta and, and have made several up. changes to the loot crate system. Apparently, there are these items called Epic Star Cards, and they have been removed from <laughs> crates, and players will now need to reach a certain rank in order to craft upgraded Star Cards. While a few weapons will be available in the crates, the rest will be acquired only through playing the game, each with a each with each locked. Whew, there we go. Uh, with each locked behind a specific milestone. As, additionally, players will have to be able to unlock class-specific items and gear by playing at that class, as reaching specific milestones will grant them crate specifics to that class. I don't even know what the hell you just said. I don't either, man. There was a lot of classes and stuff and like that. And some great classes and, and, and... some other classes. And some Essentially, people. Essentially, they're saying that you're going to have to be in a class to get a weapon of that class. That's a lot of class. Yeah, that's, uh, it's classy. That's how we do it. Um, it the is. use of loot crates was a major concern amongst those in the betas, raising fears that Battlefront 2 might end up being a pay-to-win system. That was a lot of the controversy right. that I heard a lot lately was pay to win, pay to win, pay to I win. I hate that idea, dude. Uh, EA wanted to clarify that the use of loot crates is an attempt to assuage people's fears that, you know, they're not trying to do that. They also reaffirmed that all upcoming weapons, maps, heroes, and vehicles introduced into Star Wars Battlefront 2's post-release content will be free. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. I just, I, I knew this was going to happen and the freaking cell phone market started it. Buttholes. Yeah. Bunch of buttheads. Buttheads. All right. The next little tidbit I have here is uh, over the first five days of the release of Super Mario Odyssey, the game has sold 1.1 million copies and now holds the title as the fastest selling Super Mario game ever in the U.S., not to mention the Switch, or the Switch is fastest selling game. Nintendo also confirmed that Switch sales in the U.S. are over 2.6 million right now. I still want to play. Still want to play this. Um, when I, I will buy it, it, I do not know, but uh, I do want to play it. I've seen a lot of streamers playing it here lately. It's been pretty popular around a few uh, places and new streamers that I've been following. Um, I don't know. I, I still want to play it. It's a Mario game. That's why. Well, this is probably the first Mario game that's intrigued me for a while. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something different. Yeah. Uh, the next little thing I have is uh, Amazon has opened up a link on their website catering to the nostalgia of years past. The Retro Zone, as they call it, uh, features a current wave of retro consoles for purchase like the NES Classic and the Atari Flashback Deluxe, as well as retro accessories like a USB N64 controller. Uh, and retro gaming apps where you can actually download ports of old games to your mobile device. Interesting, I mm-hmm. guess. I feel like Amazon is always good at uh, finding ways to manipulate a situation and make a buck. <laughs> That's know. why they're Amazon. Mm-hmm. They make all the monies. They make every bit of the monies. I just I don't really see the point in wanting to play a retro game on my phone. If I want to play it, I'll buy it for my TV or something. Yeah. Like that, oh, that 8 bit anthology game. Do you remember we were talking about that with Shadowgate and Deja Vu and The Uninvited? Yeah. Yeah, that came out. I got it. <laughs> I haven't played it yet, but I was like, ah, I got to have this because I forgot it had come out recently, but I'm yeah. excited. I can't wait to play it. On your phone? It's, no, uh, for, for PlayStation. <laughs> but you wouldn't want to play that on your phone. Is that no, what we're talking because, about? Putting it on your no, because I don't want to play that on my phone. It's stupid. Yeah. No. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that my nostalgia glasses. Didn't just make me buy this because, granted, it, it was very cheap. It was like seven bucks oh, that's for okay. three you games. Did all. You got three games, and I just I want to be able to play it and be like, man, I I still love this to this day. Versus playing it, going, ah, this isn't as good as I remember because I did. I played it so much as a kid. I loved it, and every time one of those new games, because we played, me and my brother played Shadowgate so much that when Deja Vu came out, it was like, oh, it's a game just like that, except it's not. <laughs> but <laughs> we, we still knew what it was, you know, because it was familiar to us, the, the whole setup and everything. So it was right. or the same but different. Right. You know. I don't know. Uh, next little tidbit is uh, Sony revealed that a VR game based on Netflix's popular Stranger Things series is coming to PS4 and PS4 Pro. 
No release date has been announced, though there was a very brief trailer released on YouTube. I am intrigued by this. I hope this is not one of those cheap gimmicky VR yeah. things where it's just something where you get to walk around in somebody's house or maybe you get to walk in the upside down for like two seconds. I actually want to have a game. Yeah, for real. Yeah, like you're part of the game. Neat. Yeah. Really tag along. Oh, yeah. That have, would be awesome. Do something in the in there. So, uh, have you got to have you got to watch Street I have not, man. Like like you, I said. Whenever I, you get a chance. I know you've got... Please, I, please, do your rant. <laughs> tell me, yeah. I have HughesNet. It's the same thing as putting a trash can on top of your house. It's the same kind of internet service. That's that's why he can't watch Stranger Things. You know, like you had to actually like pull the rant out of me this time. Like mm-hmm. I think since I've got my uh, personal hotspot, you know, yeah. like by the way, like I, I ran all the minutes out. Mm-hmm. Like today, <laughs> can't play online until Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still better than using. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fair enough. Yeah. But I think you know since I got that, I kind of forgot. Well, it's okay. It's pulling wool over my eyes. It is a little I'm bit. I'm actually playing online. I'm but you're people. not watching Stranger Things. Yeah. So I'm thinking about doing that. Yeah, you need to. At least to. checking a few out. I'm going to have to you know, gauge it and see how much data I use when I do it. See if it's, you know. That's why you yeah, need to get unlimited off. data. Huh? That's why you need to get I unlimited, have unlimited data. data. If there's a cell phone company out there with unlimited data wants to sponsor us, by God, we'll take please, you on. Please. please. Like, I have unlimited data, but you know, like it's after like 30 gigabytes That's not or whatever. Yeah. That's not it unlimited. slows you down. That's yeah, not they all unlimited. do that now. That's limited, always. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I have, I'm just going to move on. On October 21st of 2015, Activision submitted a patent that was recently approved that was described as a streaming system that contains consumer-targeted hotspots, which would appear during gameplay broadcast, supposedly during playbacks, and will feature a prompt with various commodities to purchase. Additionally, this application states that the system may either automatically cause a purchase of corresponding items. Um, An example is by looking up pre-stored financial account information of the viewer or virtual currency account information of the viewer or cause a transaction interface to be presented to the viewer, which would allow the user to input financial or virtual account information. It is not specified on what grounds the system would withdraw funds or in-game currency automatically or how the authentication procedure would be carried out. Uh, the application doesn't look into the streamers cast, uh, how they actually get benefited from this, uh, whether it's like macro and transaction based native advertisements. So whether or not if they clicked on it there on their stream, would they get a kickback from that or how that works exactly. But apparently this VGS system uh, provides clear gameplay annotations, uh, specifies the in-game events, and creates an enriched broadcasting experience on both ends. For streamers and commentators, it means a greater editing capacity, uh, such as playbacks with graphic overlays, different camera angles, and so on, whereas the audience is promised to get a more specific navigation including camera positionings, top commentators, featured in-game content, and more. However, the prime focus, as indicated by the patent's headline for Activision, is driving microtransactions in. I've seen something like this on Twitch, yeah. sort of, where depending on who's playing what game, sometimes right below it, it'll say, hey, you can buy this game right here. For Twitch. Right. And it's like Twitch has an app now, where kind of like Steam, where you can play games, I guess, through this app. I've never dealt with it. I don't care right. to. So, But if you purchase that game through their app, the player in which you bought it, you know, like on their stream, apparently they get a cut of the money. Well, that's cool. So uh, for, for what that is, that's kind of neat. But I feel like to, if there is a Twitch app in which you're playing games, I don't feel like it's... It drives a lot of interest right. because if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to the more reliable Steam, you know, as opposed to the Twitch app. So screw right. you. I don't want to. I don't want to play on your app. You know, no. take me somewhere where I want to play. So take I feel like there. they're they're pushing that a little bit, and I don't I don't know how effective it is. There might be people out there who love it. I don't know. I've not, I haven't heard, but I do know that they have something that sounds very similar to what this patent is. But what what's kind of your takeaway here? Like, what is Activision pushing here? Because it's all about microtransactions. That's the exact like. word. That and well, you said ads, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, that is a big deal. There's a lot of money in ads. Yeah. 
and they're going people are going to be paying to get in this box you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's microtransactions and selling advertising is what they're in it's funny too uh, now that you kind of mentioned that with the ads i've noticed there's been a lot of restrictions here lately on streamers right uh as on twitch where they've been getting slaps on the wrist for music which I I never seen them kind of get this problem before, but now all of a sudden it's become an issue where if they're playing copyrighted music, they'll get you know I've heard people get banned. I think it's BMI and that's something a, like that. Yeah, yeah. I, where so now everybody's kind of on edge because they're like, well, what can I play? What do I do? I don't know. So everybody's kind of been watching what they're playing and showing because you don't know. I've actually seen like uh, just dance streams, like watched um, playbacks. Right. Of other people's just dance streams, and some of the audio is muted, so they're just sitting there dancing to nothing. So it's interesting, you know, that it's gotten to yeah. that point. You know, well, I think they figured it out, but uh, Beth was streaming that, and did you? Is that who you're talking about? Mm-mm. Like her whole this first is, track was muted, Mm-mm. and she was just dancing. But I think they figured out there was something else wrong when you went in, All and right. then it worked. No, this was this was another streamer, and she had just like track after. There were a few that were still up. Right. You know, the, the songs would still play, but it would just be during the dance part, it would just be muted. And then you come back, and she's back to talking again. Right. So, I don't know. That's crazy. You know, because yeah. it's all with the, what the BMI, the... But it, but it comes down that, yeah. to money. Right. So it every time they hear their mind. thing, if you're making money off of that stream, I guess, and you're playing that thing, then you owe them some money, mm-hmm. pretty much. And I like think that. that's, that's where it really hits. I guarantee you, if I did it, because I'm not affiliated with Twitch... Right. I could probably get away with it. Right. But affiliates, partners, they're the ones who are getting slapped right now. And right. that's probably why they never thought there was a problem to begin with. It probably so, cost them a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was a one little tidbit I just kind of jotted down because I thought this would be interesting to bring up because we've talked about it numerous times. And that is Nintendo reported that the sales of the uh, 3DS are actually stable despite the Switch right now. And, right. you know, I just kind of shrugged. and I was like, well, maybe we've been wrong. I don't know. I think it's still kind of early to say because the Switch only came out, what, maybe a year ago? Or, well, um, no, it was in March. March wasn't yeah, it? March. Yeah. March 5th. So Same it's, day as Zelda came out. It's something like closing it. in on about a year. And they didn't say it's gone up. They said they were stable. There's a difference. If yeah. they said that they've still seen, you know, growth in the 3DS, you know, that would be that would sound more um, interesting to me than stable. Stable just means they're still selling. They're okay. They're probably low enough price that people are still buying them. Mm-hmm. So, so, but it was it was still interesting to hear that. I mean, at least it's at a stable level right now. Versus, okay, well, it's going downhill and they're crashing and burning. So, we'll see how long that lasts. Next little bit I have uh, is around Hellblade, the developer Ninja Theory. This is my whole thing. Like, is this about down level content? No. Damn it. But if you want to bring that up, you're more than welcome to. But let me let me get through my my bit here. <laughs> anyway, Ninja Theory. I almost got excited. I thought you could go ahead. The developers behind Hellblade uh, revealed that they have raised sixty thousand seven hundred ninety eight pounds, which is about uh, eighty grand American, for the World Mental Health Day through sales of their game. Ninja Theory had said that all the sales of the game on October tenth would be donated to the Rethink Mental Illness. Um, it is a mental health charity uh, as part of World Mental Health Day. Tamim Antoniades, uh, Ninja Theory's co-founder and chief creative ninja, uh, said that we're proud of our fans for showing their kindness toward others who, like our hero, hero Senua, is that right? Senua. Senua, sorry. Uh, need our help and continue or support to continue the good fight. Our donation to Rethink Mental Illness will impact many people's lives in a meaningful way and help shed light on their darkness. Our small gesture has made a big difference. Thank you. Now, what was this DLC you were talking about? No, it was like that's what I was hoping for. Like I seen Hellblade pop up on the screen during the thing. Like I said, I was at work. And mm-hmm. uh, I just had the, the thing sitting there and it was just the video running. Right. So I, all I was doing was I'd peek over there like that and I just kept working. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I seen Hellblade pop up, and then the first thing I thought was, yeah, you know, yeah. downloadable content, because the way the game ended up, it's pretty much, hey, let's go on another adventure. And I'm like, oh, they could have something else later planned, so hopefully they still do, but okay. I was hoping that's what it was. No, I didn't see any. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you all excited. No. I was wondering, because I, I couldn't find anything about it, and I was hoping you seen it. So no, seen I didn't. Something. 
I, I, I looked through all the news for the week, so I apologize. I did not. You should have made it up and just lied to me. Yeah, just lied to everybody. Just to about make, all you this. Put stuff. a disclaimer. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, the next little bit I have is the game Planet of the Apes: Last Frontier will be released this month on the twenty first uh, for about twenty dollars on the PS4. Nice. It is described as a choice based adventure that will take about two to three hours to complete, and it will have multiple endings. Plus, that will include a PlayLink support. To allow other people to impact the story from their phone, and I after, love the PlayLink idea. I'm sorry. I yeah, no, it. it's it's great because I, I noticed that uh, Telltale started using it. Well, not really that, but something similar to that, where you could log in and people could impact. Yeah, you know, so it wasn't just you playing all the time. Right. Everybody in the room could play along in a way. Um, one thing I was kind of noticing about this, and I I think. I don't know if we've really discussed this in great detail where people have kind of complained about the price of a game versus the amount of content you get out of it. And I started thinking about it. This, for example, you're, they said you're getting about two to three hours worth of game content out of it, and you're paying $20. I think that's more than fair. Uh, when you look at Shadow of the Colossus, we were talking about that earlier at 40 bucks. it's already $20 discounted from what a game like that, if it was coming out normally, would be, I feel. Right. Uh, but you're getting at least eight hours worth of gameplay out of that. So if you figure about $10 per hour that you get, because if you really think about it, that's what you're doing for movies. You right. Know, you essentially pay $20 for a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So you're getting at least two hours out of it. So why not look at it the same way with this? That's right. all you're paying. And you can't trade movies in. No, you can't. So that's I've never understood. I think that, honestly, the prices, they're actually, that's the one thing about video games that they've honestly got right. Yeah. Pricing. And see, even, I remember the argument with, uh, what was it, 1886, The Order? Yeah. And where people complain about that. Eight you hours could probably worth of a game, get through man. that in what, about eight hours. Yeah. But look how great it looked. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you're paying for this cinematic, interactive experience. I was kind of okay paying the money that I did. I thought it was an awesome game. Yeah. It could, could it have been better? Yeah. Yeah. But what, I mean, it was a first, you know, first time game. Mm-hmm. That was their first real big game that they had done. They'd been, you know, on the Vita. Mm-hmm. They did awesome, dude. Yeah, I'd love to play it again. I just I haven't got around to it, but I'd love to. It wouldn't take but a day. <laughs> yeah, I like and it'd that. Still be worth it. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, was it? It was fifty. It was a fifty nine ninety nine dollar game. Yeah, yeah, look at that game though. It's like you said, it was beautiful. They, the cinematics they put in it, like it was uh, on the quality of like The Last of Us. Oh yeah, for sure. And I don't have to have a game that's got to be ten. You know. 10 hour, I mean, 10 or plus hours. I like those shorter games sometimes. Yeah, because when you start to get overwhelmed and you feel like you've been playing a game too long. Like The Witcher. Like The Witcher. There's just a point where you <laughs> like, want like to finish it, but at the same time, you're like, I just, I, I don't know how much more I can do. You know, because you, you get burnt out. I get burnt out. I like to change things up. That's just me. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so know. that's why I like streaming. Like if I just like I w- I want to do that. Mm-hmm. I want to try it. But I would not bring in a crowd because I would play so much different shit. You know, mm-hmm. like I just but can't. That's, that's what I think should lure pe- more people in. But yeah. I, I do know what you're talking about because some people just like to have that dependable stream of right, Call of Duty okay. or whatever. Yeah, and Call of Duty is popular. If you're good at it and you mm-hmm. do it, there, there's a market for that. Everybody yeah. has to find their niche. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what to me. That's what being a successful streamer, you figure out what you do and you do it well. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of them in Epic do pretty good. They, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, and they don't. You don't have to pull in a big crowd for me to look at you and go. I, I think you, no. you're you're doing a great job. You know what I mean? I think word of mouth is what's going to help them more than yeah. anything because just because of the communities they're building, and it might be from one person here or there. And if you kind of look at their average numbers, most of the times twenty, thirty, you know, a piece, but there's such a good crowd there that they'll find other people and they'll grow over time easily. Right. Because it'll be like, hey, you should check them out. Hey, you should check them out. And slowly but surely, you see all these new names and faces show up all the time. Yeah. It's going to happen. It'll grow. That's what I mean, it's all on about. average, they all have over a thousand followers. Some of them are three or four thousand. Mm-hmm. And come on, man. You're going to... They'll all start talking eventually. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If you're good, you're good. And, it, and somebody will figure it out. Mm-hmm. You just have to, sometimes you have to hang around here longer than you think. But then you get some people, <laughs> there was a guy today uh, in a stream, and he was just, he was being negative. He was being <sighs> negative, and he, he didn't get it. 
You know, he he's the uh, type of person that thinks their opinion matters the most. Right. So when they were kind of slapped on the hand for having a pretty negative opinion, they got mad because they were slapped on the hand for having an opinion. But they just virtually got slapped. Yeah, it was a timeout. It was like, hey, dude. <laughs> it's like, hey, all we're trying to, all that all it was told to this person was, hey, we this is a positive stream. You know, just keep it keep it positive. And he's like, I just had an opinion. It's like, yeah, everybody has an opinion. Doesn't mean we want to hear it. Right. Okay. If it's so, a negative opinion, put it in your pocket. Right. Just clam it up. Just keep it positive. And he got so <laughs> butthurt. So butthurt. Because he's like, I can't believe that I got banned or timed out because I just, I just said my opinion. Is that how he said it? Well. Did he say it like that? Not yes like or no. That. Yes or no. No. I'm okay. exaggerating, but. I like the story way better when he said it I know, because like it sounds so much better. I will say what he did say, though. He's like, I'm going to leave this cancerous stream. <laughs> I was like, good But actually, Lord. they just cut the cancer out and it left. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, you leaving is going to help, pal. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't like that either. And the. Uh, <laughs> you got. You got <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like that negative, and then like, then, then you got the dude that just rolls up in there and goes like, hey, you're sexy. Yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? Like, what? It's like, what? <laughs> this is the best you got to do with yeah, your Yeah, and then like, hey, let me rip my shirt off for you. Do you want? I'm going to private message you my shirt being ripped off. Please, mm-hmm. man. What are you talking about? Like, you just walked in here and said three lines, and they all involved you taking your shirt off, and nobody knows who you are. <laughs> uh, my, I guess the other favorites I have are just the ones that you really can't be. You're you're angry at mentally, quietly in your head, but you can't really do anything about because they haven't really done anything wrong. It's right. just in your head. You're like, God, dude, go away. Yeah. They, they yeah. come in and like, oh, you're playing this game? Yeah, it's fun. Oh, you, let me tell you what I did. And yeah. then they t- continue to tell you everything they do about the game and how to play yeah. the game their way. Or the ones that come in there and tell you everything that's happening in your life, <laughs> in their life. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, oh, oh yeah. man, like, oh, dude, you know, this, life is hard, hard, yeah. hard, this, this, and this. But I don't care. I don't give a damn. I'm watching somebody play a game. I mean, look, it's it's good to have a community that you can kind of talk to people about. And I understand that there are some people that maybe have this friendship where they feel a little bit comfortable. But me personally, I'm not going to come into a stream and be like, guys, I'm yeah. just having a terrible day. What's going on? Well, let me tell you. I shit myself. <laughs> you know, I just, I mean, yeah, I've, I probably have done, you know, I'm, I'm having a bad day. What's going on? Uh, you know, I try to keep it because I'm not. I don't want to sit there and lie. I'm like, oh, I'm having a great day when I'm not. I just can't right. do that. No, just ain't gonna say nothing. I mean, if I'm really having a bad day, there are times that those streamers don't even see me, and they know that's when things are really bad. Right. It's just because I'm having a bad day, and I just don't want to bring it around. Right. But no. if I'm having a bad day, but I still kind of am looking to be brought up just a little bit, I might just be like, I'm, you know, things are a little rough. You know, just just trying to. Trying to lift my spirits. That's all well, it's, the reason yeah. I'm in here. And when they already know that, because, you know, I know mm-hmm. you talk to them. I don't talk to all of them. I talk to some of them. Mm-hmm. And they know when you're, you know, that you're already having a bad day. And what do they do? They see you come in the room and they're like, everybody give them a hug, yeah. you know? And that feels good. Yeah, you know? it does. I've only had a, one hug. Well, you got a bunch of hugs and then you called me a loser. I did. Yeah. You're, like, <laughs> you're still proud of that, huh? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I feel so loved. Yeah. I love those people. I love them all. Yeah. They're and cool. They know I do. All right, well, let's get back to the news. We've kind of trailed off a little bit. I'm That's sorry. Okay. We're hope we're stalling for John. <laughs> we well, we were, but I'm going to. I don't think he's going to come. I'm going to whip him no. like I'm going to whip him like with my hand. I'm going to touch his ass with my hand. Like Harvey Weinstein. No, <laughs> What's his name? no, no. We're not going to talk about that direct. No, no. Or that garbage this person. This is Hollywood. I'm going to touch his butt. We're not going to do that. <laughs> anyway, you're going to get in so much trouble, man, because you're making fun of that. No, I'm not. Oh I'm not going to get into it. Never mind. Um. Sony confirmed uh, this week that uh, Media Molecule's Dreams is still in development, despite being a no-show at E3 and the Paris conference. Uh, the game is described as having players solve platforming puzzles by creating items in its levels and possessing characters in the world. It will also allow players to create worlds that look like living paintings, even sketchings, or sketching live with other players. I actually remember this yeah, was it a year ago? Was it last year? Oh no, man, it was way more. So it was. Now. It was like 2015. Because my my brain thought this was an older concept. Like they've been working on this a while. It's been longer in 2015. Really? I think it was back when the PS4 first came out. Okay. I thought. Well, what did a VR title? 
Or well, was it, it going out, to it be? It was before the VR title. Was it really? It was before that. It was just like almost like, hey, you can build anything. It was almost like, hey, this yeah. might be creation tools mm-hmm. for you to build any kind of game you want to, kind of like in the level creator. Mm-hmm. They just took it a step further. And it just, I think for whatever reason, it got worked back. It got VR worked into it. It was a big mm-hmm. game, maybe something. I don't know. I don't it's, just, it's kind of been pushed on the rug, but yeah. that's the one good thing about Sony is if they start a project, more than likely they finish it. Yeah. And we wouldn't have got a uh, Last Guardian if it wasn't for that. Yeah, I was actually curious because it, I'd actually forgotten about it. I'll be honest with you. But then when they brought it up and they started talking, I was like, "Oh yeah, I do remember this." And I do remember being intrigued by it. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see that it's it's still out there. Um, this next story that I have, this was this was kind of an odd one to me, but odd in a good way, and that's why I wanted to bring it up because the game itself has kind of caught my attention. And I don't think it's really going to get on a lot of radars as of yet. Right. So if I can bring a little a bit of attention to it, that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming Is for. Is it um Bubsy? No. Oh. Uh there's a developer called Game Labs. They have announced that it is working on a Western open world third person game for the PC called This Land is My Land. Have you seen anything about this? No. Okay. Uh the game will be a single single player open world stealth action game with a living hostile environment. Players will play as a Native American fighter set against the backdrop of the American frontier. Awesome. Now, according to the developer, the game will feature several innovative mechanics that will increase variety and create surprises every playthrough. One prime example is the world will continue to grow differently every time you start the game. So, That's cool. Such, uh, as such, towns and camps will grow differently, patrols will change routines, and your enemies will change their behavior. Because of this smart and reactive AI that works against you, the game will offer multiple ways to achieve your objectives. Moreover, the game will feature a map that is said to be bigger than Skyrim. So well, let's be honest, like everything's bigger than Skyrim yeah, now. <laughs> by now, yeah. But, but that's, I a good, think that's, that's a good map. I think that's the standard everyone goes to now because it, at the time it was like, oh my god, this is so big, and now yeah. everything's like, yeah, we can do bigger. Because yeah. even didn't they say Breath of the Wild was bigger? I think so. So, um, anyway, uh, while all this sounds awesome, this is coming from a small team. The only thing I'm concerned is this will wind up being a No Man's Sky situation. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying it will, but there is that concern because yep. they promised all these big things, and then when the game came out, it was like. Ah. But well, from what I did see graphically and everything like that, it looks amazing. Like you could have just shown me those pictures and said, "Hey." There's a new Western game coming out, and I would assume it was like a AAA title coming from a big studio. Right. Because it looked really, really good. And I love the fact that you're playing as a Native American character versus just another cowboy. How long before they go, this is not right? Facebook likes it. Once this gets enough traction, we'll see the... But you know what? People should be happy. You know, people should be happy that they're actually being represented properly. that That you're actually being able to play that character for once. I mean, the only game that I can think of in recent memory was Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. But even he was kind of... He was both. Yeah, he was a mix. So, this, from what it is, I don't know what the story's going to be, so that that could probably also raise a lot of eyebrows, controversy, depending on how they play it out. I'm going to assume that if they planned it this far, they're knowing what the proper way to go around it would be. Are you an Apache fighter? They didn't specify your tribe. I would hope so. To me, that's the... One that comes out of my mind is in the old West, mm. Apache. Yeah, I mean, just like I said, regardless of what it is, I'm intrigued. I, yeah. I really would like to see what this is, what it's going to be. Uh, I really hope that everything that they promised here will happen, because if everything changes as you play yeah. it and nothing is the same, that's already just a, a mind blowing to me. Now, okay, now say. <laughs> If one day is passed in the game, like I don't want to go back to the city and five buildings just popped up. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I no, hope no, they no. do gauge that the right way. I think it would be cool if um, maybe a, a town and maybe had been hit or something like that. Maybe like an attack had come through. So yeah. you go back the next day and you see that maybe something's burned down. Right. You know, people are just scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. Maybe people are moving out. Maybe or it becomes an abandoned town. Rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that would be really cool. Now, no, I do agree with what you're saying. Don't. Make it be one day, and then oh hey look, there's like we got a bank and a hotel yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like wait, what? I actually get to see it being built in some form of real time. 
I guess more more real time. I guess you know how games they kind of do a night and day cycle, but it's a little advanced. Right. Maybe something more like that. Be neat. Um, next or last little story that I have here is about a game being developed by uh, Box Hedge Games, another indie developer. They have announced a Mega Man inspired 2D action platformer called Super Mighty Power Man, and it's coming first to the Nintendo Switch, the 3DS, and uh, PC, and it will eventually launch at a later date on PS4 and Xbox One. This is a genuine. 2D action platformer inspired by the famous Mega Man game series, as well as other games including Castlevania, Contra, DuckTales, Kirby, Super Mario Brothers, and more recent ones like... Uh, I don't really don't know how to say this. Do you know the one called V V V V V V V? Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do it that way. Retro City Rampage and Shovel Knight. In the game, you take control of Corey, a boy who accidentally finds himself caught in the most unexpected adventure to save the galaxy. Uh, helped by a clumsy extraterrestrial robot named Robbie. Very, very clever name. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to pick up those little gyro thing? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen him. Uh, and he's armed with a mysterious device called the Power Grasp. Corey must defend the Earth from the spreading evil forces of General Mock. I'm assuming that's what it is. M-O-K? Mock. Yeah, um, Moke, he will need Moke. to fight and jump his way through deadly environments, hordes of monsters, and other hazardous traps to free occupied planets from tyranny from his enemy's lieutenants. The power grasp grants Cory superhuman powers, allowing him to merge with other life forms and become one of the many forms in Super Mighty Power Man. Boom! Key Fireworks features. just went off. Hmm? Fireworks just went off in the <laughs> commercial. Uh, key features that they listed was an experience a 2D action platformer in the purest NES form without sacrificing any of today's technological advancements, uh, the ability to switch between eight different suits and master their respective weapons and abilities, excellent responsive controls to test your skills in different environments filled with traps and enemies, cool gameplay elements and level design to top up the fun, true 8-bit NES aesthetics featuring colorful sprites and backgrounds, a cute and appealing cast of characters introduced via short humorous cinematics, <clears throat> encounter countless and various creatures and defeat giant bosses, levels packed with secrets, alternative paths, and items to collect, complete with full collection and the various objectives to unlock new features, awesome NES chiptune soundtracks with cool melodies and rousing, rousing, <laughs> rousing rhythms. I actually uh, did listen to a track. It sounded... Very, I mean, if you just said, hey, this is a Mega Man track, I'd have believed you. You know, right. that, that's how accurate it was. It didn't have that kind of 8-bit, but very modern. I right. mean, this sounded like it came off of an old NES game. It was really cool. Uh, and full controller support and customizable controls to make you feel right at home. Just right at home. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a few pictures of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it. I, you, you can. I feel like this is the game that Mighty Number no. 9 should have been. What a trash bucket that was, yeah. <laughs> dude. And that actually came from the guy who created the damn character. That's what's sad. Well, this seems more like a love letter of proper sorts, you right. know, as opposed to just recreating your character. It's like, this is what I love about the games. This is what we're going to do, but we're going to put our own spin on it and do things. Because, you know, on Mega Man, you get new weapons, and essentially it's just a color swap of right. your suit. Yep. In this, you actually get a new suit. It's similar cool. to what you're wearing, but it changes depending Something. on what the character you are. Yeah. So it, it, I thought that was cool. From what I saw, it looked very neat. I'm kind of excited to see if it will be as good as it looks and sounds. Yeah. But time will tell. Did you get the Legacies, the Mega Man Legacy games? Uh, I got the first one. I'm not too interested in the second one because right. one through six, those yeah. are the ones I love. Uh, the rest, I never had that much of a connection to, I guess. Right. I was kind of hoping they would do like a Mega Man X collection. Right. Because I could probably play 1 and 2 again. I don't think I ever played anything beyond that because they went to another console. They got a PlayStation? I think they did. But, I mean, I still I still love them. I mean, I could play 1 and 2 day in, day out. I right. Love, I could sit down one afternoon and play Mega Man X beginning to end and just because I love it so much. I used to hate it as a kid. That's the funny part. It's because it's so hard. Yeah. But now I can play it. It's like I finally got it. Was Mega Man me, uh, me, 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 me. was Mega Man X the one that had Turbo, the little dog, the first one? Uh, you're thinking of Rush. Rush, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, he Rush. was in that was in the first one or the first series. 
Okay, so that was part four, am I right? Mega uh, Man 4, I think he showed four. up in three. Okay, yeah. And then was pretty much a prominent character. Rush. In the I said Turbo. Well, Rush Turbo is about the same thing. No. I'm sure in another market he's known as Turbo. Possibly. Possibly. And maybe that's what I played. All right. Well, maybe. <laughs> All right. Guess what time it is? Weird news. Weird news. I only got one piece of weird news today. It's okay. It's all we need. As long as we get one piece of weirdness, I'm uh, happy. There's a party game out in the world that is played in VR from a developer called Imagination Studios, which is now available for Oculus Rift and <laughs> HTC Vive. Would you like to know the name of this crazy party game? Is it called Crazy Party Game? No, it's called Cow Milking Simulator. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, you and your friends must milk a cow as fast as you can, earning milk, selling dairy products, eating cheese, and making money. All of this, however, must be conducted under the pressure of a time limit. Oh Players. my god, too much pressure, dude. Yeah. Cows Players kick can you. collect new products, new hats for your cow, mm. uh, and milking as fast as they can place... What? Oh, and milking as fast as they can to place their name on the you leaderboard. You totally have a cow mooing right now. Yeah. Uh, there's also a variety of madcap going on, goings on to deal with. I think they ought to sneak a bull in there every now and again. You start milking the bull. <laughs> that would be helpful. Yeah. Oh, milking a bull. Uh, the the madcap goings on that you have to deal with. Uh, there's alien abductions of the cows. Oh my gosh. Uh, the brightly colored designs of the environments. I don't really know how that's madcap craziness. Uh, and objects make this. Oh, oh, I see. Well, it just kind of blurred together. It's suitable for all ages. So I doubt there's going to be milking a bull. Well, damn it. I mean, I really... I, I want to milk a bull. Has it really gotten this bad that this is where we're at? <laughs> Cow milking simulator? Have we really hit the you bottom You said it's of the VR, bed? right? I did. Yeah, so... <laughs> They're out of ideas, man. <laughs> all right. Our topic this week is... Um, is Microsoft not taking the Japanese market seriously? That, that's the big question here. Since Ever since the release of the original Xbox, Microsoft has never really broken into the Japanese market. Even now, sales are meager with the Xbox One S selling about an average of 50 a week versus sales of a Switch or a PS4 selling close to 20,000 a week. Yeah. Phil Spencer admitted that they <laughs> didn't have any games that appealed to Japanese gamers and that they need to do better. I think <laughs> the best that they could come up with was uh, Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> fighting game, Yay. which everybody has. Uh, on the flip side, the NIS American president and CEO Takura Yamashita says that Microsoft treats Japanese market, the Japanese market, like it's a niche market or niche market, niche, niche market. Right. All right. Uh, Microsoft. He says, "quote Microsoft has always had a minimum order quantity for their games, and their whole structure isn't really geared toward." niche games, or smaller games like Japanese titles, so they're not really supportive of Japanese games or developers. Yeah. So, why is Microsoft ignoring such a valuable market? I don't know, because that's another million or two million consoles that can be sold mm -hmm. pretty easy, probably, if you pay attention. And it's also like, there's you some more Xbox Live subscribers. Yeah. I, just, I don't know, man. It's the same thing they do over here. They uh, th There's no games. Here they have their three core games like they've always done, and for some reason, hey, these make money. Let's just run with that. If it makes money, that's fine. And then you get Phil Spencer, who you thinks for the games. I think they are for the players. I, I feel like he's just more of a front man now because he's always saying the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. We got to do better here. We got to do better. We got to get better first party studios. You got first party studios. Pick good games. Mm -hmm. Make good games. You can do it. Yes. I mean, what strikes me odd is that you've got your other two, you know, competitors out there dominating that market, yeah. and yet you're not doing anything to try and horn in on that. Nothing. Why would you? Why would you allow that to just slip through your fingers? I mean, <clears throat> sure, it's going to be hard to to break your way into it. Granted, they didn't have that much, you know, luck with the original Xbox, but it's almost like. It didn't work that time, so they're just like, eh, screw it. It's not worth it. I mean, it. let's be honest. The Xbox, the original Xbox, came out after the PS2, which was a freaking juggernaut, mm -hmm. came out. And it came out considerably, like, 
How long was the PS2 out before it came out? I uh, couldn't tell you right offhand. All right, so I never even knew what an Xbox was at first. Yeah. They didn't market that. They didn't do it right. But let's say the 360 had a year head start. If it wasn't for the Red Ring of Death, they have a better name. And I don't think they would have sold as many consoles. I think that's why they sold so many of those consoles, the mm. 360. But saying that, they had a ton of Japanese exclusives then. I mean, I think Star Ocean and games like that that really do mm-hmm. good over there. Yeah. They had a bunch of those. And then they just stopped. It's like as soon as they got their lead and they got happy, they just stopped. They didn't care anymore. And it just seems like that's a loss of a lot of funds. And I don't see why you would... It almost comes off like laziness. Yeah. Like they're just well, not willing to put forth... It's like like you said, they're they're making their money where they would need to. And it's just like, eh, I just don't care. They don't really care. care. I just don't right. care. And it just seems ridiculous. You know, yes, if you really want is. to be ahead in, in the entire industry, then you need to hit up every market. You need to make your money where you can, not just where it seems easiest for you to do so. And like you said, if you're putting out the same three games and you've got all those bro gamers out there who just love those same three games and they continue to play them and you're making bank, then why try? It's just right. Like, Meh. Well, I mean, you, th- you think about it, like, I forgot, what I, was, I forgot what I was thinking of. Shit. <laughs> uh, you know, it's too late in the day. Yeah. They just, they quit with everything, it seems like. So, okay, Sony, this is what I was going to say. I remember now. Sony did not win America with the 360, mm-hmm. right? Or the PS3 and the 360. Mm-hmm. They did not win. What'd they do when the PS4 come out? They made sure they won America. They knew, but they did not take away from Japan. Yeah. So... There you go. All of a sudden, now you've expanded. They didn't stop with the UK. You know, they won. They they're bigger in the UK. I mean, globally, they're bigger than Microsoft as far as console sales. Yeah, they always have been. Microsoft always just focuses on America, and that's it. Mm. Because they don't care. They don't care that they're over there because they're making money. Fair enough. Yeah, I just it seems odd to me, and that's why I wanted to kind of bring it up and just talk about it. I don't really feel like there's a lot to unpack. It just generally comes down to outright laziness is what it seems like. I, yeah. They're, they, they're scared to lose a dollar. Well. Because sometimes you got to spend money to make money, I think. That's kind of the uh, old saying as it goes. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, to me, it shows that they're not necessarily all in for the gamers. Because, you know, there's probably some Japanese gamers over there that want to play an Xbox. Yeah. I would think. It, there, there might be a game or two that kind of, you know, catches their eye. They'd be like, yeah, would kind they of like had a bunch, that. though. Star Ocean, Last Hope, I think. Yeah. That was one of them. Um, there was a there was a few other just JRPGs that they had that you wasn't going to get on uh, PS3, and they wasn't going to come over here for that part. Mm-hmm. They stayed over there. What what happened? Laziness. That's what we're going to attribute it to. I say yeah. laziness. All right. Uh, release dates. So what we have here, I wanted to bring these two up because I feel like we didn't bring them up. Uh, properly in the last episode but uh, out today which will be Friday for those of you listening on November 3rd uh, I don't ever recall saying Call of Duty World War 2 came out yeah you probably looked only on Tuesdays ah and that's probably what it was. This is a weird release. I felt like that I've covered all those, but I didn't. So Call of Duty World War 2 if you didn't already know it's out yeah, I'm <laughs> going to go uh, Xbox pick mine One up tonight PC. Uh, and also, uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this one before, but I guess it got a delay. Was uh, Steven Universe Save the Light is now available on Xbox One? But I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was it's available not on, PS4? on. It it is on PS4. I think it already came out. Oh, but today it's on Xbox One or gotcha. November third for those of you listening. It's already out. Now, as for tomorrow for you listening on November seventh is the big Xbox One X launch. That uh, so after you get through with this, I want to say something. Okay. Um, uh, launching with that, even though they said they don't need any games to launch with it, but launching with it is a Super Lucky's Tale for Xbox One. Their their new family-friendly... Have you seen this game? Conquerors neutered down. Yes, I have. No, I don't. No. Yeah. Uh, also, Sonic Forces for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, because, you know, Sonic is a seller, sort of. On November 10th, next Friday... Uh, or this coming Friday, for those of you listening, Need for Speed Payback for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. 
and Mario Party, the top 100 for 3DS? No. No. I, I kind of got burned out on Mario Party. It was fun for a while, but it was just like, eh, okay. I just think that putting Mario at the front of something does not necessarily mean it's going to be good. Well. Mario Sex Capades. Eh. <laughs> yeah, wow. That would be, uh, I don't want to see that. All right. Uh, for PS Plus for November are free games that uh, all of you out there who may have PlayStation Plus memberships, the free games you get for the month of November, which you can download on November 7th. Uh, if you have PSVR, you get Until Dawn Rush of Blood for free. I'm happy free. about that. So if you're thinking about getting a VR, maybe add it to your library so you have it for later. It yeah. would be, uh, it's well worth it, I think. It's, uh, it's a fun little game. Uh, Worms Battlegrounds for PS4. Those games are okay. Okay. If it's free, I'll play it. I'll That's try it out. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Bound for PS4. What is that? I cannot remember. I don't. I, I saw a little about it. Is that it. the one, the dancing? Uh, that sounds right. So you can actually, I think you can play it on VR also. Huh. I don't know. I think I remember. I'm going to shrug. I don't know enough about it. I just kind of glanced at it and I was like, man. But that's okay. I've, I've mentioned before I've got too many games to play. I, I need too. an off. I need an off month. So this is fine. Yeah. I know a lot of people are already complaining. Well, look at look at how we just went downhill because last month we got Metal, Metal Gear Solid Five. Why can't we get that again? <laughs> I don't so, know. But I like that voice. Yeah. <laughs> What's so his name? Whiny little. What's that guy's name? Um, Greg. That's a good name for that guy. <laughs> hey, before you keep going, mm-hmm. uh, November seventh. Yes. Um, Frozen Wilds. Yes, least. that's right. Uh, yeah. Frozen Wilds. Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds for PS4. For PS4. It's a John's DLC. John's got my damn game. Yeah, so you need to get that I'll back. I'll get it back for November. Yeah. Well, Idiot. You haven't. Idiot. Especially not today. God, that's why I don't like him. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to continue. Um, for PS3, if anyone out there still has a PS3, uh, R-Type <laughs> Dimensions and uh, Ragdoll Kung Fu Fists of Plastic. As you can see, they're not really trying anymore. I got that game on PS Plus the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cycle's dying. Uh, for PS Vita, and this is a cross buy with PS4, is Dungeon Punks. Um, I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, and for PS Vita, not a cross buy is Broken Sword Five: The Serpent's Curse, Episodes One and Two. I don't, I, I need to play my Vita more. I really do. But I do it's, too. It's been collecting dust. I've got games on there I need I to play. Yeah. I just, I don't have time. I don't have time, people. Don't hate it. I just don't have time. Uh, now for November, Xbox Games with Gold. If you are an Xbox Games with Gold subscriber, here are your free games for November. Xbox One Games, you have Trackmania Turbo, available November 1st through the 30th. I'm just going to say meh, because that's meh. what I felt. Meh, meh. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands, no, from November 16th to December 15th. Awesome game. If you haven't played it, get on it. Uh, And a holdover from last month is uh, the Turing Test. Uh, It's available now until November 15th. Looks interesting. Turing Test. The Turing Test. Is that Alan Turing? Uh, It's based, yeah, some game kind of based around that idea or that concept. So it's going to have that machine? I'm assuming so, yes. That sounds, is it a VR game? I don't know. I don't think so. Because Microsoft doesn't have VR. This oh. is a Microsoft. Oh, sh- yeah. I'm in the games of gold, man. Damn. Keep up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I he, did. He I heard you off. say that. I, I just forgot. It's all right. Uh, on Xbox 360, we have Nights into Dreams from November 1st to the 15th. I've always wanted to play that. I've always heard it's really good. Nights into Dreams. Yeah. Nights. Uh, it's a series, a game series. It's oh. a, a little character, kind of lanky, purple. I don't really know how to describe lanky it. Lanky purple. Is it a uh, own PS4 at all? I don't know. It may be on you sounded PS2 like Walter or PS3. Cronkite right then. <laughs> I don't. I no. don't know. I, I'm not sure. I know it's on older consoles. Like uh, play, it might be on pay, PlayStation Three. I don't. But again, I'm not. I don't want to swear to it. Right. But I, I've seen the games before. And I'm like, I've always heard they're fun, but I've never had the chance to play it. I'd like to play it. If you've never played it and you got an Xbox 360, maybe you should try it out. I've heard they're great. And then let uh, Steven know how good they are. Yeah. If they're good. And then the last one is uh, Deadfall Adventures from November 16th to the 30th. I don't know what that is. Deadfall. Um, I can't remember either. Yeah, it didn't look fun. It didn't look fun at all to me. Uh, yeah. That's that's me. Other people, people are going to bitch there, this You month. may look at it and you think it looks like the greatest thing you'd ever want to play. So people by all means, go out there all and play around, around this month. Mm. You know. So those are the games. That's them. Yeah. Retro review time? No, wait. I wanted to make one comment. Okay. 
with the whole thing going on with Paris, you know, games week, this, you know, all the big announcements Sony had. I mean, you didn't hear really anything from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I, I didn't see anything. It was all Sony. Yeah. Do you think that they dropped all these bombs just before the Xbox One X release? Well, you know, there purpose? is this theory that uh, certain competitors have this way about them. And <laughs> I think, I don't know if I told you this or not, but there was, there was a theory going around, just kind of what you're talking about, like, you know, someone's trying to take the wind out of someone's sails. Yeah. That uh, Marvel Studios likes to do that to DC. Um, for example, every time that they have a movie come out, a Marvel trailer seems to appear. Right. Or every time a, a DC trailer pops up, and there's like a, a whole new thing just happens to appear on Marvel. So I was like, I... like they have something waiting in the wings. Right. At all times. It could be a, a huge coincidence. It just, it's funny that you kind of notice these coincidences happening again and again and again. Right. Great example is the Punisher series that's coming out on Netflix had not had a release date for some time. And Justice League was coming out November 17th. Everybody's getting hyped. And then suddenly, very, very close to Justice League time, it's like, ah, oh, Punisher's coming out on November 17th. How about that? I'm saying, I'm And everybody's that. sitting there thinking, are you kidding? Come on. Because someone even theorized that that's what they were going to do. And sure enough, they did. That's smart. <laughs> so, it's, I feel like if there is some truth to it, it's got to be friendly ribbing, but at the same time, clever, you know. I mean, think about it. All these big announcements, a Last of Us 2 trailer mm -hmm. that's used begging for it, you know, E3. Mm hmm you get excited for PS, you know, the PS4 again. Yeah. Like, man, this is what's coming. Awesome. I don't necessarily have to have that other one. Though. I mean, you have to admit, yeah, it's it's not really a bad idea because right. you're you're you want to take that wind away from them just so you can continue to let people know it's like, hey, I know that this over thing over here looks really great, but look what we got coming. Right. You see that? They don't have Do that. Do you want to you want to spend that on here or do you just want to wait? If you wait, Look what you get. Yeah. We're going to pay you for it. And, you know, there are going to be people out there who will actually be sucked into that, which is good. But then there are other people who just do not have any kind of, you know, control, self-control. And they'll just, they'll do it. I'm just going to buy this now. Some of them are just going to buy it. Like you said, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'm an early adopter. If I, mm -hmm. wanted, if I wanted an Xbox One X, I would go get it. Yeah. And it wouldn't have anything to do with me not being excited about my PS4. Mm -hmm. I'm still ex I'm excited about my PS4. I'm excited for the Xbox One X release. You know, yeah, uh, it's it's a uh, just another step in in um, competition. Competition. You know, Sony's got to do something to answer it back, and that's this is what they did. Mm -hmm. So, competition is always good. Always retro review time. All right, retro review time. Um, I dug something up. And the only reason I probably even dug it up was because I'd seen someone stream it recently. And it just, it caught my interest enough. So I wanted to play it. I wanted to kind of get a feel for it. And then I just decided today, I was like, oh, I'll do a retro review on this because it'll be something different. Something we've not done. Uh, it's a game called Harvester. Harvester is an interactive point and click adventure full motion video game. Uh, that was released on the PC back in 1996. This was designed by DigiFX Interactive and published by Merit Studios. Are you familiar with this game at all? I feel like I am. Is it now? Are you, does it have a little moon guy on the front of a little like a car? No. Would, uh, I think yeah. the cover was a Grim Reaper. Okay, no, then I'm not familiar with this. But thing. are you familiar with these type of games that they had back then where it was kind of like Phantasmagoria or something like that, where it was a live-action person that they used yeah. as the character, and then everything around it was fake, right. but it was to try and lure you in as, you know, this surreal type of video game? Right, right. That It's it's one of those types. Okay. And if, if anybody who's listening, you've, you've never heard of anything like that, you need to check them out just, just to see what video games were like trying to be innovative back in the 90s. Uh, this was billed as the goriest video game ever made. I really don't think that can be true today. Anymore. I just, I could be wrong. because that trailer I mean, for Last of Us 2 was probably going more gory. <laughs> yeah, according to the people who are out there right now. Uh, again, I don't really feel like that's true anymore. But anyway, the game focuses on Steve. Uh, he awakes 
in his bedroom with a case of amnesia in a strange town in 1953 called Harvest. Now, you wander through this town talking to an array of very, very eccentric people that stress the importance of joining the Lodge. Now, you will eventually do just that in hopes of finding answers and uncovering the mystery of this strange little town. Now, the game utilizes a point-and-click interface. You visit various locations within the game's fictional town of Harvest uh, via an overhead map. You, you, As you kind of walk out of a you know, situation, you'll see the map, and you can kind of point and click on wherever you want to go, the post office or the general store. Right. You know, uh, by speaking to various townspeople and clicking on special hot spots, if you will, players can learn uh, valuable information, collect items that will progress the game's story and how it plays. Uh, Harvester will also feature, or also features a fighting system where players can attack other characters by selecting a weapon and then clicking on a target. Both the target and the player's character have a limited amount of health available, allowing for either the player or the target to die. The player can choose to progress through the game by solving puzzles or by killing one of the non-playable characters. I'm going <laughs> to tell you something I did like during my, my very first early playthrough. Right. As I was trying to learn the controls and what I needed to do, there's a, there's a kid, he's a paper boy, and he wants you to deliver... This is the weirdest damn thing. Usually the paper boy, in, a, in most scenarios, he's there to give you the paper, right? Right. Well, apparently I have to give him a paper. I have to give him a paper. Like, right. he's there to collect it to recycle. Oh. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. So, you're supposed to go out there and, and hand him an old paper, and then he takes it to be recycled. As I'm sitting there, again, trying to get adjusted to the controls of the game, because I'm using a keypad and a mouse... I realized that one of the <laughs> right click or left click on the mouse caused a punch. Right. And I punched this kid <laughs> by accident. As soon as I punched this kid, he pulls out a pistol and starts shooting me down. I'm like, what the hell, man? What kind of little paper boy carries a pistol? That guy. But, hey, this town is very, very strange. I mean, it's right next to Crenshaw. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um Harvester was first announced to the public at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is known as CES. Do you remember that? They, they don't have that anymore, yeah, do they? Yeah, that's it. Do they? Yeah, uh, beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Uh, well, in January 1994 in Las Vegas. Uh, Still in Vegas, too. The dark and blasphemous content of the game actually drew huge amounts of attention and created a lot of expectation. The writer and director, Gilbert, Gilbert P. Austin. Gilbert. 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 Where Gil you at, Gilbert? Gilbert. Uh, he was against any kind of censorship as he wanted the game to serve as an examination on the controversy about whether or not, whether or not violence in media creates or is created by violence in society. Is it? Well, I guess that's up to the game to decide. Possibly. Isn't it? Uh... He finished the creative work in autumn of 1994 and moved on to other projects, which caused the game to be delayed up to two years. Dang. Uh, and when it finally did get released, it was a commercial failure. The game did manage, however, to cause controversy. Now, this is a uh, spoiler. If anyone doesn't want to hear it, spoiler. Don't, uh, if you plan on playing the game. But, you know, I don't really feel like it's a, too much of a spoiler. Just in the sense of, like, if you want to be shocked by things that are going on in this game. There was a scene in the game that was censored in most of Europe where there are children who are cannibalizing their mother. Awesome. Yeah. That scene alone actually got the game banned in Germany. Germany will ban you for anything. Mm -hmm. And who are they to complain? Yeah, I know. All so. right, no, I'm not going to get into that. I already did that this week. <laughs> Uh, Harvester received mixed or average reviews. PC Gamer gave Harvest a positive review upon its initial release back in uh, 1996, but then panned it in a 2000 review or 2011 review where they called it the goriest, most confusing, and above all, stupidest horror game ever. In 2011? Yeah, in 2011. Uh, because it got, I think it got re-released back on PC in other formats. Mm. Or they may have just done a retro review. I don't know. Uh, All Game remarked that the game's delayed release felt indicative of the game as a whole as conversations with characters are frustrating and often make little sense, and they don't. Uh, plus, the manner in which the plot develops is disappointing. 
GameSpot's at best. Huh? At best. At best. Uh, GameSpot's reviews was mixed as they uh, felt that there was nothing actually revolutionary going on about Harvester, but praised the game's full motion video segments as truly disturbing and commented that it had tried and true adventure mechanics with entertaining twists. Another, I guess, to follow that truly disturbing comment, there's a there's a scene very early in the game where you're talking to your mother. Yeah. And she talks about, you're going to wake your brother. And when we're talking about bad voice acting... It's it's bad voice acting. He's like, who are you? Oh, what are you talking about, Jimmy? I'm your mother. Oh, you're my mother? Uh, seriously, I, I probably nailed that, I think. You think? You, somebody would say that came directly out of the game. Uh, but anyway, you're talking to your mom, and you, you kind of shout. He's like, what? I have a brother? And she's like, oh, don't do that. You're going to wake him. And eventually you say something stupid, and you wake the kid and they'll do these cutscenes where you just see, you know, it's it's very, it's they're so brief, you know. It's like, but they were trying to be innovative at the time, right? Where it would show like this full motion cutscene, and all it would be was just someone kind of leaning over or just making a face. But it was just that was all the cutscene. <laughs> it was just that moment, huh. I guess, to, to em- emphasize something. Yeah. So they showed they they did this cutaway scene where they show the baby sleeping in the the crib and just sitting on the side, but you see a bug crawling beside it and then that, that was it then there's another one later on when the baby wakes up <laughs> the baby has put the bug in its mouth and it's supposed to be chewing so they loop the video where it's going like chewing once and then they just back and forth it you know very very poorly oh, wow yeah so that's apparently <laughs> the one of the disturbing scenes in the game and they might have done that on purpose because that probably made it look even more disturbing oh, yeah. it's just it, because it, yeah it does kind of create this weird yeah. feel like God, this is freaking weird they might have been way ahead of their time they may have been but what, what's his name David Lynch oh yeah uh, Eraserhead yeah <laughs> Twin Peaks yeah uh, now for me this game came out at a time when I felt like censorship in video games was getting plenty of attention but I think it was mainly on consoles and arcades because right. 1996 hell that was uh, after Mortal Kombat really had right. hit I think we were at, what, Mortal Kombat 3 by that point, maybe? Yeah. We were very close. We were in, into the PS2 era, am I right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting no, close. I think PS1, because Mortal Kombat 3, PS1 had just hit the mark. Okay. Because that's when they shifted that over. Um, PC games, I really felt, kind of went largely unnoticed uh, when it came to censorship. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I've yeah. seen some stuff in this game that if, you know, it came out at that time, I wonder how it actually got through ratings. And I don't think that they were censored or even, I, I really don't think they went through the ESRB because I don't, I don't really know if they were fully established at that time. I thought oh. they were. Um, because at least by Mortal Kombat 3, I remember there was at least an M on the package right. of like your game. Now, 2, I remember they had disclaimer, you know, where it was like, hey, you just know that there's blood in this game, blah, 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 and all that. And then number 1 had, had sweat. Yeah, you had <laughs> sweat, bunch of sweat. On Nintendo, um, but again, I really feel like that you know PC games just no one was really paying them much no. attention, so they just, they got they were allowed to get away with stuff like this until. But even how did this get by? And Night Trap was it doesn't make any sense. It's strange um, because I honestly do not remember hearing about this game at all. Now there there may have been a point where I was reading Game Informer or, or you know whatever was popular at the time and. I may have seen it, and I just don't remember it because it just kind of, like it, they said, a critical failure, and no one ever talked about it anymore. Right. But it just seems odd that a game like this would have not garnered any kind of attention from media, as right. far as and censorship it goes. And it may have, yeah. But I don't. I never recall hearing anything about it, and I did not see anything about it stating anything like that. I mean, I, again, I may have heard about it. I don't know, but. This game, I will say, it's bad. But I say that as a... It's bad in an awfully good kind of way. In a term, it's a term of endearment. Yes. It's one. like a bad horror flick. Right. You know, there are some horror flicks out there that you know are bad, but you you still find some enjoyment out of it. You right. know that it's terrible for what, whether it's cheesy acting or just effects or gore or whatever it is, but you're in... It, like you said, you're endeared by it. So yeah. you, you continue to watch it time and time again. I feel like that that's what this game has going for it. 
it can lure you in for the cheesiness, the craziness. It's insane. It's Twin Peaks meets some kind of, I don't know. I, I really <laughs> don't know. Us. Yeah, it's, it's insane. But it's good in that regard. You know, right. if you can just look past it and you're not trying to look for a game that makes a lot of sense and you're just there for the ride, this is that game. You know, you're going to enjoy the silliness, the craziness of it, the absurdity of it all. Right. And kind of overlook the stupid thing. Can you thing. still play this game? Yeah. It's well, actually available on Steam. When That's, did you play it last? Uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. Yeah, because uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I think I would I would dig this. I want to try it. And they, they didn't do any kind of polish on it. It still looks rough around the edges, you know, very pixelated, very rough and gruff, because it just wasn't built for today. Right. But it's... Like I said, it's endearing in its own way. You just have to have that mindset. I saw uh, reviews on Steam that were just tearing it apart. But again, I don't think that they're of the proper mindset to right. appreciate what it is. I think they're in the more modern set where games have to look a certain way. They have to play a certain way. And that's just that's my takeaway for it. So I don't know. I, I think it's a... I think you could enjoy it if you can have a little bit of patience and you have a love for cheesy horror flicks right so ah well that's our show man we got through it it was a bit of a long one and john didn't show up he did we not. gave him extra time i never even heard back from him that's the shame i am revoking his license mm-hmm. um in school suspension possibly um, i'm probably gonna paddle him okay with my hand well well, we'll save that for off air. Right now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna close out the show, well, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I'm gonna thank all of our listeners right out there following our podcast across the web. Uh, leave us reviews, Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, wherever you listen. We'd love to hear from you. You can all follow our Facebook page, join our community page to talk about games with fellow gamers. Give us topics to discuss, then maybe hop over to Redbubble, get you an official T-shirt, Please, some stickers. Buy me one. Yeah. Get a clock, for Christ's sake. Can you get a clock? You can get a clock. You can tell what time it is and see our little, our, little, the clock. our little guys. That's that right. Our little guys. They're working hard. They are working hard. Uh, you can also go to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions to help support the show. $5 or more will get you early access to content such as season two of our YouTube series, Man Cave, which is out Ooh. now. For those listening on Monday, it came out on Saturday, so you can watch episode one right now. But if you pay $5, you can watch uh, four more episodes. Four more. Yeah. And one more to come. Right now. Yeah, and one more to come. We, we're still we're still working. That's how hard we work. Well, I just show up. Yeah, he does. I just show up, but I always show up. He does. I always show I, up. I got to give him I gotta give him credit for that. He's always there. So that I can be appreciative and sometimes of. I don't really think that he wants me to be there. Mm-hmm. There are days. I can't be quiet sometimes. There are days. Shut up. <sighs> Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. I am Todd Stark. Join us again next time. But until then, game on. <laughs> <laughs>